Hey, hi, in this video, we're gonna see how to create PySpark EWS Glue ETL job, which will extract the data from Amazon S3 bucket, transform that data into a required format, and finally outputs the transformed data into uh, Amazon S3 bucket output path. So here we will see how to set up the AWS S3 bucket, which contains the raw input data. We're gonna build the AWS ETL job with using the notebook option that is with using the Jupyter notebook options. The ETL job will be constructed with the required step which can extract the data from the Amazon S3 bucket, transform the data and then finally output the data into uh, Amazon S3 bucket in a targeted output path. So here the main aim of the, this job is to how to use Jupyter notebook. Jupyter notebook is nothing but a script of a, basically a Python script which will help you to walk through the complete script from you know the chunk by chunk right i'm going to share this jupyter notebook file in this video's description and also the other related files of this demo is shared in this video's description you can find the required link down the description from the uh, mentioned in the below description so with that note let me take you to the my aws account here so this is my aws account currently i'm in aws glue services I have gone to the ETL job. In the ETL job, you can find the AWS Glue Studio where you can build your own ETL job. So here we're gonna use the notebook option in this in this uh, you know video demo. So I'm gonna click on notebook options in the engine. You're gonna choose the Spark engine. In the options, choose the upload notebook and click on choose file. So you can choose this file which is I have shared in the video's description. The file name should be something like this that is uh, etl jobipynv file that is you know python notebook file so click open that file and then after that you need to choose the basically im role and click on create notebook so once you click on create notebook it will take nearby 30 to 45 seconds and you should be able to see a page something like this okay so don't get confused because you know both are same right so whatever you see currently i am in oregon region here also I'm in a Oregon region and this is my AWS account. This is the next phase of the, you know, the uh, same job in the sense whatever. Once we click on a create notebook, so it will take you to this particular interface. So here we're going to, you know, basically walk you through the steps that is required to build the ETL job. Basically, we mock the ETL job step by step. And once we are satisfied with the input and output, we're going to save that particular, you know, the notebook definition as a ETL job and use it. So here, you know, first one, let me go down basically. So these are all the informations about the uh, another notebook here, which you can go through. And uh, the first task, okay, the first task that you see here is the selection. So as you see here, I'm selecting the tab here. So tab is nothing but basically a segment of piece of code. So I'm, I have selected this particular segment of code. And uh, you see there is a blue line, which sh which actually shows the selection part. So in this part, what we do is, you know, we're going to need the our source s3 bucket name so for this demo purpose i have the source s3 bucket so when i say source s3 bucket it does also has the required input so make sure that when you are trying to do this particular trying to do this job uh, or basically trying to do this lab in your system you try to create a s3 bucket in this format so create a s3 bucket like this and have the you know the path something like this that is job you know lb4 that is lab4 I uh, you know the country lookup blah blah so basically try to make sure that you know you need to have this uh, uh, you know the input files something set up something like this yeah but for now you can go through or you know so basically this is basically a mock lab session while you are trying to do it in your system maybe you need to change the file path accordingly so here let's give the my s3 bucket something like this so i'm going to go back to the notebook editor here I'm going to close the first option because consider that that is once I click on a create notebook, the job is ready in the sense job uh, template is ready. Now we need to fill it, test it and then save the job. So basically I'm going to replace the my bucket name with the bucket name I have you know, copied from the other tab. And this bucket contains the input file. Okay, Remember that if you see here. So basically it is looking for a particular path that is uh, you know, that is in this path that is um, glue workshop library you know the pi pi country underscore convert basically since this is a very kind of a very unique uh pi spark etl job 
it is using the third party library and the third party libraries are kept in this particular gif file i'm going to share all the relevant files required for this particular demo in the video's description so video description contains a github repository link you can find it from there all i will give the required relevant you know the the path uh, the basically url paths as well so it also contains the other one that is a jar path as well okay so basically with this option and you know just try to replace the bucket name that is dollar bucket name should be replaced with the your bucket okay so once you are replaced with this bucket click on a run button so there is a run button here so what does that mean is basically you know so once you click on the run the segment of python code or python script will be executed by the notebook that is jupyter notebook and uh, you see that output so basically looks like everything went good because it didn't throw the you know any error and we see the output underneath that particular segment so once that is done we go to the next shell basically generally they call it as a shell let me call it as a segment of the code okay so basically in the next shell we have uh, these many options which is actually imports all the basic glue and the spark libraries and it actually you know starts the spark session so for that case what we do is you're going to run the next segment basically our next shell of the code so i'm going to click on that option and uh, once you click on this option you see that there is an uh, you know the basically waiting for session whatever you see here so it is waiting for session to get ready to status okay so basically what happens is it is PySpark is creating a session for us for this etl job you need to wait until this ready status goes in a basically complete state right so it is currently in a waiting state uh, waiting for session and it will go in a into the basically complete mode after a couple of seconds so we need to wait until that okay so while it is working let's go to the another tab okay so the another shell here is basically you see that here it actually imports the it's basically important it, it basically this is where actually the transformation of the data is happening which i'm going to walk you through at a light level and as i was telling that you know session will go in a created created mode earlier it was in a waiting mode now it is is been created basically session has been created or pyspark session has been created now let's go to the next shell or the segment of code so in the segment of code you see that basically it's it's important uh, pi country convert function from external basically here we are importing the required you know important uh, pyspark libraries are being imported so basically in this notepad uh, in this uh, notebook we are actually importing the python libraries in this format so this is the format that you can have to run into the into your in your in your pyspark uh, script in this format yeah so this is importing the library and this is basically defining a function which will actually convert the code so i was telling on about a transformation so basically i have a example data to that example csv data i'm going to append a one more um one more column which is actually called as a country code so country code is nothing but an extra um you know the column that gets appended according to the row names yeah according to the row data and that function has been written here okay so i'm not going to walk you through this uh, code but basically this file will be shared which you can do it at a you know you do this log from your uh, your side as well okay so for now let's quickly go through so this is basically leveraging the country code uh, into a udp format and then so this is also it basically reads the data set from the data so in the sense one side it reads the data um, and basically other side it actually has the data format of country code and it actually merges these two data right so that is what it happens here so we need to change the bucket name here as well so i'm going to change the bucket name here and then you see that load in sense if you see here so i have the input data something like sample.csv file so i'm going to take show you my sample.csv file so this is my sample.csv file so this is a csv file if you see here it's a csv file of huge data set it is something like a country item type something blah blah some something data is there here it has a country name as well so what we are doing is with using this pyspark etl job we are appending a one more column here ending with like a country code and that will be given the respective country code if it is available so where is the country code uh, you know the data is set so country code data is sitting in a states dot csv file so here you have the state name abbreviation and the code names are you know files are been given so we are employing this pyspark etl job which can read this data compare this with that data and try to give us a refined output format nothing but a single file 
all right so that is what it happens in this job okay so now let's run this piece of code make sure that before you run this particular shell of code or segment of code you know make sure that you replace with the s3 bucket so here i have replaced the s3 bucket name here and i'm good to run this now so i'm going to run this this piece of code again so when it is running you might see here that you know so there is a star mark here so you see so this star mark is nothing but you know that piece of code is still running so once that piece of code is is completed you know it will come back to here so once you click on this one basically you know the final chunk of the code basically syncing the data into the another s3 bucket path basically i'm using the same s3 bucket because you know i'm just bifurcating the input and output according to the s3 bucket path yeah so in 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 the one subfolder i have an input in the another subfolder i have a output okay so here basically you see that the star mark has went away and it has a number now which means that you know this segment or this shell code is completely completely executed now you see that we have a blue vertical line is sitting across this particular chunk so basically this is nothing but it actually writes the output into a particular path so let's run this piece of code which actually gives us the required output so once you click on run button again you see that there is a star mark remember that star mark in a jupyter notebook file means that it is running so currently it is running so we need to wait for this to get complete so meanwhile it is so base looks like it is it is successful it was very fast and you see that that is i know it has executed okay so so before i go to show you the input and output let me tell you the volume of data right so here this file is very huge and if i go down so it contains this much number of data so this is basically you know it looks like yeah so it looks like a million basically sorry it looks like a lakhs yeah so it has a lakh number of data yeah so that much huge data is now transformed and uploaded into another destination right so that we can see it from here so till now i was we were seeing that particular path okay so now what we did is with using this pyspark jupyter notebook you know we completed the etl job in a step by step manner now we're going to examining basically we are actually validating whether it has done the required job or not so first one let me show you the input so this is my lab number 4 sorry this is the my sample input data is from the lab number 2 that is sample.csv file which i shown you and uh, if you go down so basically you also have the input that is basically uh, the country code so you can find the country lookup basically from this one that is country lookup file so that file is already been kept it here if i go back to this one that is state file all right okay so these are all the input data um now let me go to the another output data so earlier this bucket didn't had a folder called output so now the output has been created so we're going to go to the lab 3 and uh, we're going to go to the notebook because if i go back to the you know the, the definition here you see that this is the s3 bucket appended with the output lab 3 and notebook so this is where our output is been kept here and then comes with the you know the 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 job string name so the job string name is constructed with using somewhere here so if i go to this one the job string name so jobs time so basically you have a job time string so job time string is nothing but this date and year you know basically date format so this is my date format and then in this one we have a three output file which we can explore now so click on this file so basically you see that you know that the data has been extracted from the input file now it has been output yeah so in this one you can actually go to the actions that is in the objects actions click on a query s3 bucket so that we can see a query here we can just query the data present in this particular file so i'm going to run this particular file a uh, particular this uh, you know the, i'm just going to query this particular csc file and it should return us something like this okay so i'm just you know getting the top five output so the formatted output looks something like this you see that we have azerbaijan blah blah and at the end of this one we have a azpabg okay so if i go back to the our sample data so the sample data does not has the you know the it, it does not has this particular you know the ending with uh, blah blah thing right so that is nothing but it didn't had the azpa something like that so now it has been appended okay so so basically if i run this query for bigger more chunk say like 100 so let me run this uh, top 100 basically here you go right so we got a top 100 and you can see that you know all these data are now appended with the required country code so the country code is basically you know the the PySpark job has identified okay so with that note basically you know i have shown you that you know from the source 
how you can extract it transform that and upload it to a another destination path okay before i wind up i need to tell you one more thing so here you can rename the job so say like this is for s3 um so basically s3 to let's call it as a s3 to s3 pi spark job say pi spark etl job so let me let me name it and then you can save this particular file here so once you click on once you name it and try to save it basically what happens is it will this notebook file gets automatically converted into a etl job which i can show you here so if i go to the uh, uh, basically notebooks uh, basically go back to the uh, refresh it here you should see the job so this is the job which we created and you can find the script basically this is the script which we created just now don't worry so i'm going to copy this script and share in the video's description you can find it from there all right so with that note i have shown you the things need to be shown in this video from scratch to end finally a kind request please do subscribe my channel that would really encourage me a lot with that note thank you thanks a lot and see you in the next video